Again, I welcome you to this special Hamatan Sunday. Amen. Now we've started having summer now in Nigeria. Oh, is it winter? This is serious winter for all of us. Well, it's mysterious that is, is, is cool because heat is over in your life. Just like you have not sweat, you have not had to sweat because of the chilly condition. Beginning with this year, sweating for survival is over in your life. Struggling for survival is over in your life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. We've never had it this way for many years in this part of the world. So what has never happened in your favor is yours this year. This morning I'll be sharing with you on taking it by force. Taking it by force. Taking it by force. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Taking what belongs to you by force. And I like to look at this from very deep scriptural perspective. And I, I'm sure you get it this morning. We are going to define what this force constitutes. The contents of this force. What is it that makes this force? Or what are the forces that makes up this force? Amen. Amen. Now see, it, it, it said, and the violent, the violent means the forceful. Come and say forceful. Uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the forceful take at it by force. So the man must be positioned for it. Amen. That's why I said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be there is what to be before you can become. There is where to stand in order to take what belongs to you. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. So you first, you have to be positioned for your possessions. You have to be correctly positioned to actualize your possessions. You have to be correctly positioned to actualize your possessions. You have to be correctly positioned to actualize your possessions. You have to be correctly positioned to actualize your possessions. You have to be correctly positioned. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then you put on the whole armor of God that may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That is to ward off evil. Evil, you must be strong. You must be forceful in the Lord. If I perish, 
I perish. What God says is final. Taking it by force. I like it to listen because turning point is always enforced. You have to enforce it. You have to what? Enforce it. You have to enforce it. You have to enforce it. So it's important for us this morning to examine the content of this force or what forces makes up this force that we are talking about that helps you to take what belongs to you. Now listen to this. He has given us, for instance, all things. How many things? How many things has he given you? He has given us all things that makes for life and godliness. All things. Through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. I call it unto honor and dignity. That's the meaning. So whatever is contrary to your honor, contrary to your dignity, has been fully paid for. Second Peter 1, 3. He's called us, he's given us all things that makes for life and godliness. He's called us unto glory and virtue. So important that you know that all things are yours because you are Christ. All things are yours. All things. In First Timothy chapter 4, the Bible says, Godliness is profitable to all things, having the profits of the life which now is and the one which is to come. So God has packaged everything that this life will require for you and I. How do I take it then? He said, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to deliver to your inheritance. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. To deliver to you your inheritance. Acts 20, 32. So the forces that we're talking about, they are inherent in the world. They are contained in the world. They are embedded in the world. They are hid in the world. Listen to this. Whatever belongs to you this year, no devil will rob you of it. Whatever belongs to you this year, no devil will rob you of it. And a good start matters to the end result. In every race, a poor start becomes a problem to one who is targeting the prize. So a great start is essential. And I must commend you for your response to the three days of fasting and prayer this last week. It is awesome. You are already getting on a great start. And this is already appearing the greatest year of your life. So it's important. Let's now try to define these forces. What are they? I look at it this morning from pre three angles. One, the force of the world. Two, the force of faith. And three, the force of prayer and fasting. The combination of these three We guarantee your supernatural delivery on all issues of concern this year. Every encounter with light puts you in command of darkness, true or false. Everyone that is in possession of light is in command of darkness. And the entrance of his word, it giveth light and give it understanding to the simple. Psalm 119 and verse 130. So a, the revelation of the word of God is what begets a revolution in our life. And a revolution connotes a forceful turn around. Come and say forceful. A forceful turn around. He said, arise and shine 
for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. And they will start to say, who are these that fly? Were we not on the ground together before? The force of light has distinguished him. Listen, the force of light will forcefully affect your turning point this year. So you need to sit up, sit up, sit up in deep study, deep revelations and irresistible application. You see it and you sell out to it. You sell out for it. If God said it, forget about the devil. He has done what he said he would do. When he stretches forth his hand, who can turn it back? He said he upholds all things by the word of his power. Everything answers to this book. This book answers to nothing. Except to the author, the one who gave it. This book answers only to God. It does not answer to the devil. The content of this book does not require the devil's cooperation. The light from this book humiliates the forces of darkness. So every genuine encounter with the world puts you in command of every satanic activity in your area. And I'd like you to be set because this is your year. 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 So the force of the world is one of the vital forces that enables you take what belongs to you. Taking it by force. Taking it by force. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven sovereign, violent, and the violent take at it by force. The kingdom of heaven requires violence and the forceful takes it by force. The kingdom of heaven requires violence and the violent violently take it. So important. So everything the word says establishes what is available. And it strengthens you to go for it. Think for, for instance this morning. We are here to partake of one of the great provisions in the word of God that has its well defined purpose. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm talking about the communion from verse 23. Paul the apostle was speaking, and he said, That which I have received of the Lord, the same I deliver unto you. That you remember when Jesus was going to be crucified, that same night he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to them. So if you take it with that understanding, you take it with that spiritual insight. You are going to benefit this following three in your life. He said, those who took it anyhow, and fair, what is it? Let's just go there. They are weak, they are sickly, and they die. That means it is designed for your strength, for your health, and for your longevity. In all of scriptures, all of scriptures, the communion is the only established anti-death drug. What do I call it? Anti-death drug. Those who take it worthily, they are not permitted to be weak, they are not permitted to be sickly, and they are not permitted to be a victim of untimely death. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 30. It, it helps you to appreciate that as you are partaking of this today, weakness must give up. Strength will be released. 
Sickness will be flushed out. Health will be restored. Everyone appointed to death will be set free. Now you see, you see that's, that's, that's in the world. Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 48 and down to 58. He said, I am the bread of life. Your father ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. Whosoever eats of me shall not die. That means it is an anti-death drug. And he said, ah, we can't understand that. He said, I wish you do. Because when you do, just like I live by my father, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, he shall live by me. I will be living in him. I will be living through him. He will be using my strength. He will be using my heart. He will be using my mind. I will be the one living through him. He will be drawing on my strength, drawing on my health, and it goes on. After this communion, whatever cannot be found in Christ will never be found in you. Whatever represents weaknesses, Sicknesses and diseases, but at the instance of this communion, it is flushed out from your life. Yeah. I would like to read this because there is blessing in reading. John chapter 6. John 6 and verse 48. I am that bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which came coming down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Eh? Is that your Bible? Verse 50. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. No matter what appointment has been slated for you with death, that appointment is disappointed today. 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If a man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. So every dying organ in your body, just like the power of God lose the unitary tract of that young man, every dying organ, every dead organ in your body as to partake of this flesh and the blood of Jesus, they are quickened back to life in the name of Jesus. I am the living bread which came down from heaven and the man may eat there. If, and if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread which I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews then strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh, verse 53, of the Son of Man, and eat and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now, this must be a different kind of life. Amen. Because, I mean, to eat, you must be alive. To drink, you must be alive. So he's talking about another kind of life. His own kind of life. That means the communion is divine, is designed as a mystery through which eternal life is transmitted to replace our natural life. Has no life in him. And he's talking about his kind of life because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So today as you partake of his blood, I'd like you to see it as a spiritual blood transfusion. Your corrupt blood is flushed out and his incorruptible blood is transfused. So everyone that is said to be SS, HIV positive, call it anything. At the instance of this communion, 
by the spiritual transfusion of the blood of Jesus, perfect health is restored to you. Can I hear your loud amen? Can I hear your loud amen? Whoso eateth my flesh, verse 54, and drinketh my blood, has what? Eternal life. The God kind of life. The sickness free life. The incorruptible life. And I will raise him up at the last day. He has my life now. And I won't let him see corruption in the last day. He has a place with me. He's enjoying eternal life now. My kind of life is operational in him now. And I will still raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. And as the living Father has sent me, and I live like the Father, or he said by the Father here, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me or like me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as the Father this eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This is a covenant initiation into a world of divine health. After taking this communion, the remaining days of your life is declared sickness free. Get back to, to what, whatever doctor, whatever laboratory you went to. After this service, it will be clear to you that God has cleared all debris off your body. That's what he said here. Now, what is his flesh which they did not understand when he said it to them? Chapter 26 of Matthew. Matthew 26. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Jesus was speaking here. As he served them the communion. Matthew 26 and verse number verse 28 and as they were eating Jesus took bread are you there and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take it what is it this is my body now he took also the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said what drink ye all of it for this is what? My blood. So this goes to interpret what the mystery was expanding in John chapter 6. It took of what they were eating. So it's not some bread prepared in Bethany, some bread brought back from Israel. It's not some wine brought back from Italy. 
from what they were eating. And he said, this is my flesh. This is my blood. So as you take this thing that appears so ordinary, because we have called it by name as his flesh and his blood after his manner, you are walking into your liberty totally today. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. Everyone assigned for death is walking out in liberty today. Yeah. That is in the world. So when you take it, you are taking his flesh, you are taking his blood. And he said that is meat indeed, that is drink indeed. The highest quality drug on the earth. Meat indeed, drink indeed, nothing compares with it in value as far as re-engineering the human system, the physical system of man is concerned. So something unusual is here for you. Can I hear your loud amen? Can I hear your loud amen? Just like it was in 2 Kings chapter 4, when they had poison in the pot and the prophet said bring me a meal and as they cast the meal into the pot you remember the story the bible said there was no more death this is that meal in a figure hallelujah it is mission is to neutralize every poison in your body as you partake of this heavenly meal every poison in your biological part, your human system will be neutralized now in the name of Jesus. Bring me a meal. And as they brought the meal and cast into the pot, the poison was neutralized. Every poison in your system that is this or upsetting your life and bringing you pains and discomfort as you partake of this table today, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Remember the Bible says, a rod shall come forth out of the stem of Jesse. And his name is who? Jesus. His name is who? Jesus. Now he was the rod in the hand of Moses. And when that rod was placed on the ground, what happens? It turned to a serpent. The magicians are sailing to do the same thing, put their own rods down and it turned to what? Serpents. And what happened? The rod of Moses swallowed up all of the serpents of the magician. Every enchantment, every spell that is tormenting your body as this rod is passed into you, they are swallowed up eternally in victory. And after that incident, the magician had no more rod in their hand. So they lost the battle in the first round. Every activity of the magicians in your life, in your body, that is distorting your life and upsetting your destiny, they are swallowed up practically today in the name of Jesus. So see it as the miracle meal that neutralizes poisons. See it as the mystery rod that swallows up every rod of the magician. So every enchantment, every spell, against your destiny is swallowed up today in the name of Jesus. Watch out. You'll be passing out strange things to indicate the battle is over. You'll be passing out strange things to indicate that the battle is over. You'll be passing out strange things to indicate that the battle is over. Can I hear your loudest amen if you are there? taking it by force. So when you're coming in to the communion table, you are coming forcefully. It is over at last. 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 Over at last. Can I hear your loudest amen? Every 
assertion of science that is contrary to the truth is falsehood with God. Every, everybody they say will die that came forcefully to appraise their inheritance are still alive. So no matter what has been said against you, because everything contrary to you which is against you, he took out of the way, he nailed it to his cross. God will prove that in your life here today. Yeah. Now listen to this. Everyone under the sound of my voice, death has lost the power over your life. Yeah. Death has lost its grip over your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everyone called sick. You're walking out of that sick bed today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everyone laden with drugs, wriggling under the weight of drugs. You're walking free from that weight today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Taken in by force. So you got the word. It energizes you, and then the force of faith steers you to act. That woman said in her heart, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So she stood up. Faith is always taking steps. Faith is always what? Faith is always taking steps. Faith is speaking loud, and faith is acting bold. Speaking loud, and what? Acting bold. Speaking loud and what? Acting bold. Speaking loud and what? Acting bold. Our God that we serve is able to deliver us. And even if he does not, we will not bow to your graven image. He's speaking loud and acting bold. They were not cringing, walking to the fiery furnace. They were themselves. There was no struggle to bind them. They were not told that they struggled. They bind them and say, are you okay? Have you finished? Okay. There was no struggle. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. 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 Acting loud and acting bold. You saw those fellows? The Bible said they went up the roof of the building. And they removed the ceiling. They removed the sheet. They removed the ceiling. And they carry a man. He said, carry me down. Ah. They said, can you make? He said, carry me now. And Jesus saw their faith. Faith is always acting wild. Acting what? Why? Call it so. Acting wild. Acting wild. It is not faith if it is void of action. It is not faith if it is void of action. Show me your faith without your action, and I show you my faith by my action. It is not faith if it is void of action. It is not faith if it is void of action. Faith is not just speaking. Faith is acting. Faith is not just speaking words. Spect is, faith is acting. The world. Jesus saw their faith. He said, Take off your bed. I think you are true. The force of faith. Come and say the force of faith. And he said to that woman, Thy faith has made you whole. Go home. And the flow of blood stopped. So when you receive the word, and the official refused to bow. Then, step out bold on his head. And he will surrender. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. 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 
Many years ago, I was down with fever. And my uncle came to me out of concern and said, now that you have prayed that you are not healed, he wasn't mocking. He was sincere. Why don't we check up in the hospital? The forces a man rose. I said, who told you I'm sick? Who told you I was not well? Who? As I was shouting that, the healing fact was flowing through me. I stood from that reaction. It is time to react. Is somebody here hearing what I'm talking about? I said, it is time to react. It is time to react. It is time to react. Whatever you don't confront, you cannot conquer. Whatever you don't fight, you cannot prevail over. Whatever you don't assist has a right to remain. It is time to react. Faith is always reacting against whatever is contrary to the truth. I'm glad to let you know, whatever you react against today is bound to submit to you. You are not returning home with any mark of the enemy on your life. And everyone under the sound of my voice, wherever you may be in the world, you are hooked onto us on the net, or you pick this tape sometime. Wherever you are, under the sound of my voice now, every word-based reaction qualifies you and access to your possession. Every word-based reaction, every word-based reaction qualifies you and access into your possession. Every faith-based, word-based reaction. You are not reacting on who you are. You are reacting on what is written. This is what is written. And what has been written has been written. The scriptures cannot be broken. And that light shines in darkness and darkness cannot handle it. Satan, you can't stop there. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is always speaking loud. One of my young ones was hit by the spirit of insanity, 1983, December 25. And I was back in the village and I was told, oh, one of your sons is down. And I said, come on, let's get it. Should Satan not advise himself? that whatever has to do with me desires some dignity. So I got in there and I saw this young chap under the oppression. Satan was having a fee day. They were pouring oil on him. They were doing everything on him at a corner of a room. As soon as I entered, because I was on John chapter 1, and that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. As I stepped into that room, the supposedly insane young child stood up and prostrated to greet me. Every opposition you left before you came to this service, they will bow to you on arrival. And they ask him, do you know who that is? He said, yes, that's my brother. I was the only one he knew in that state. He didn't know anybody else, not even the mother. Light is so powerful, but until you act on light, it has no effect. You may have current in your system, until you turn it on, darkness will still be prevailing. So the act of turning it on is what we call faith. And I said, dress him up, put him in my car. Let me see the devil that can enter my car with me. Did you understand what I'm talking about? And they put him in the car. That was it. Within 10 minutes, he had slept. One of the great plagues of insanity is sleeplessness. He had slept. We had to wake him up after a one hour drive only back home and help him to get up to where he would sleep. Woke up in the morning stood up and came and proceeded to greet me. And I said, well, let's take him to the hospital so that people will not rush into my house. And we took him to the teaching hospital. They said, what is wrong with you? He said, you mean what was wrong with me or what is wrong with me? That was the end till now. 
Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is the way you react against every anti-scriptural act around your life. Faith is a reactant. It's always reacting against anything contrary to the truth. For we cannot do anything against the truth but for the truth. We can't do anything against the truth but for the truth. I've shared this before years ago. The doctor put his equipment on my hand and he said, hey, your blood pressure is high. I said, not mine. He said, check it. I said, it's not necessary. He said, do you speak English? I said, I think I speak better than you do. <laughs> All that the devil was looking for is whether I was available for high blood pressure. I'm glad to announce to the devil you are no longer available. I say, you are no longer available for his ministry. You are no longer available for his ministry. You are no longer available for his destructions. It ended there. It ended there. It ended there. It ended there. Until you despise the symptoms, they will not disappear. This is a day for you. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. Faith is always speaking loud and acting bold. And God will always honor Bible-based faith. Bible-based faith. Bible-based faith. And of course, Taken it by force. The next force we look at is the force of prayer. The force of prayer. What do I call it? The force of prayer. In Luke chapter 3 verse 21, everybody went to be baptized. Jesus also being baptized and prayed. The heavens opened. Everybody went normally. Jesus went on another track. Luke 3 21. Jesus himself also being baptized and prayed. The heavens opened. And prayed. He wanted to take something out of that place. And a voice came out of heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He forced the heaven open. He forced the heaven open through prayer. He forced the heaven open through prayer. You are coming in to take the communion today. Don't take it the way you have always taken it. Take it praying and a new chapter will open. I said take it praying and a new chapter will open. Take it praying and a new chapter will open. Take it praying and a new chapter will open. Take it praying and a new chapter will open. That's what God is saying this morning. He said... Behold, I've given you Sihon the Amorite, king of Ishbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. Contend with him in battle. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. I have given to you, but contend with the opposition. And one of the ways we contend is in prayers. One of the ways we contend is what? In prayers. He said, call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You shall seek for me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. God has given you a turning point package for the year 2005. So, contend with opposition on the altar of prayer. Reinforce your prayer life with fasting. Force your heaven open. It is your right. Because it is your turn. Because it is your turn. So if you expect the unusual, then engage unusual forces. Engage what? Because like begets like. 
if you must experience the unusual, then you must engage unusual forces. This is going to be the best of the best years in your life. Yeah. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. What is in the communion? Eternal life is in the communion. What is in the communion? A heavenly meal that neutralizes all poisons in your body. What is in the communion? A mystery rod that swallows up all spells and enchantments against your life. Jesus himself also being baptized and praying the heaven open. I want to pray your way to the communion table this morning. What do you pray your way to it? It is over. It, you are not just going gradually. Even those of you who are serving, you are serving praying. You are serving what? Praying. I want such an order today that delivers each one's portion to them in specific terms. As you take the communion, eyes that are not seeing will be cleared off. Ears that are not hearing will be open. Legs that are not working will get up. Blood that is corrupted will be cleared off. <laughs> Jesus himself also prayed, be baptized, and pray the heavens open. How many want to experience an open heaven this morning? Do you want to experience an open heaven this morning? God will bear witness of you today. God will bear witness of you today. God will show up in your case today. God will show up in your case today. Yeah. That young man will have spent 300,000 for that operation and will still have died because the forces against him could not be handled by medical science. The force that killed his senior brother came to look for him as next. They have visited him in the dream through which they used to visit him. But hallelujah, they came late. I said they came late. He has found his way into this prophetic family. God brought him just on time before they destroyed him. I'm glad to let you know the devil has come too late in your case. The devil has come too late in your case. The devil has come too late in your case. Too in your case. That young man came into this commission only 2004 November. Just a few days more for them to slaughter him. A few days more. Can you imagine you who have been here? If somebody came here three months ago and could not be slaughtered, then tell me what devil has power to slaughter you. No one shall be slaughtered in your family this year. Just on time. And I'm glad to let you know everyone in this service, you are just on time. I said, you are just on time. Everything that has been disorganized in your body is being reorganized supernaturally now. <laughs> Satan is too late already. Satan is too late already. And what more? This month has been declared, God will avenge me speedily. God will avenge me speedily. Luke chapter 8 and verse 1, I mean Luke chapter 8 and verse 1, 18 and verse 1 to 8. God will avenge me speedily as you engage the forces of prayer all through the month of January. My God will rise to fight for you. And as he fights for you, everything held down by the enemy will be let go. So everyone is experiencing a turning point this January. <laughs> can I hear your loud amen if you are there? God who can give a job on the 29th of December. Isn't that absurd? A job. What are you getting a job for 29th of December? You can give a job 29th of December. I'm saying to you that this January will not pass without a tangible turning point testimony in your heart.
He said, I tell you, he will avenge him speedily. He said, how much more will God avenge his own elect who call upon him night and day? He said, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Come and say speedily. So you are in your night and day season of prayer. Come and say night and day. Night and day season of prayer until everything falls into position concerning you. This is not an ordinary month. This is a month of new beginnings. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? God will avenge them speedily. So there will be speedy responses from heaven in your favor this month. Are you ready? How many want to take what belongs to them by force? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, sovereign, violent, and the violent take it by force. Sovereign violence and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven, sovereign violence and the violent take it by force. I refuse to go back with anything contrary to the truth in my body. I refuse to go back from this service with anything contrary to my inheritance of total health, vigor, vitality. I, I refuse. I refuse. Nothing contrary to strength. Nothing contrary to divine health. I refuse. I refuse. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Take your Bibles and open to 1 Corinthians 11. And when he had given thanks, Jesus speaking there, I mean, Paul was speaking here, uh, verse 23, for I have received, 1 Corinthians 11, 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the same, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the, blood, the cup and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. That is, as you drink it, remember how I lived here. That is what this is designed to communicate to you. So you can live like me. He was never down once. His blood was perfect. His breath was perfect. All the organs of his body were in topmost form. Remember how I lived. This is what this is intended to communicate. For as often as ye take this bread and drink this cup, what happens? Ye do show the reason for which I died. So it is to help us show the values and the virtues of redemption. The values and the virtues. Ye do show. Ye do show the reason for which I had to die. I am passing this on to you to have what to show. After this communion today, they won't need to ask you. They will be saying it in you. You won't have to line up in the hospitals again where you used to line up. They will look for you there and will not find you anymore. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes. That is all through your day on earth. All through your days on earth. This is my eternal prescription for you. And he said here, For he that eateth, and drink it unworthily, verse 29, I'm not just jumping, eating and drinking damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die. That means this mystery is packaged for your strength, for your health, and for your longevity. And when you appreciate the value 
and the worth of this mystery, it delivers to you those values. Strength, health, and longevity. Strength, health, and longevity. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. This is God's own device for servicing our human system. This is his own prescription. And he's a great physician that as often, as often, as often, so get back to the table, as often, get back to the table, as often, get, when anything is contrary to what you should be showing, get back to the table, take it. As you take this one to do everything contrary to what he died for, for himself took your infirmity, and he bore your diseases. And the chastisement of your peace is laid upon him. And by his stripes ye are healed. Lift up your hands. I must have something to show today. I must have something to show today. I must have what to show today. In Jesus' precious name. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have them. So as you approach this table today, I decree that every desire of your heart be supernaturally delivered. Lord, by this mystery blood transfusion, let every corruption in every one system be flushed out finally today. By the mystery energy that is in your flesh, let every weakness be converted to strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, by the rod, the mystery rod that is in the flesh, let every spell and enchantment be swallowed up in victory today. Lord, we see this table as a miracle meal. Let it neutralize every poison in everyone's body in the name of Jesus. Lord, every dying organ, let them be quickened back to life in the name of Jesus. Everyone appointed to death, let death be swallowed up in victory in the name of Jesus. This is the Passover blood. Lord, as people partake of this blood and this flesh today, let every determined evil pass over their lives. Let every determined evil pass over their lives. Today we all take cover in the blood against the avenger. We take cover in the blood against the destroyer. Let every destroyer be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. It is done. This week is declared a turning point week for you indeed in the name of Jesus. This is declared a week of turning point testimonies for you in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God that helps people's infirmity in prayer is released upon you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. I'd like you to set yourself for something unusual this next Sunday. Jesus said, I know the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The anointing has come upon you to energize you on the prayer altar. There are the many days of your life you will never suffer prayer weakness disease again. He said, God will avenge him speedily as he stands strong in prayer day and night. He said, heavens will open. This month, your heaven will open. He said, we know not what to pray as we ought to, but the Spirit himself helpeth our infirmity. So the Spirit of God that helps people's infirmity, that helps people's prayer disease, prayer weakness. 
that spirit will be released upon you afresh in the name of Jesus. The spirit of God that helps you pray according to the will of God. For he maketh intercession for us according to the will of God. That anointing that helps you pray on course is coming on you afresh in the name of Jesus. And what more? Whatever can be called a yoke that is still hanging around you in any form, around your business, around your career, this coming Sunday by that anointing, the body shall be lifted from your shoulder and the yoke taken from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. This week is your week. No evil report is permitted in your environment. Psalm 121 will become your song this week. Your going out is preserved and your coming in is preserved. The Lord shall preserve you from all evils. He shall preserve your life. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is declared a week of testimony for you. Everyone said to be HIV positive, it is now converted. Everyone that has been agonizing under the plague of sickle cell anemia, it is now converted. Every oppression of typhoid fever is now dissolved. Every heart disease is now healed. Every kidney challenge is now restored. High blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, they are caused already. From henceforth, by the mercy of the communion, you will live like Christ. From henceforth, by the mercy that you are partaking of, you will live like Christ. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, you will live like Christ. Every plague of nightmares through which the devil torments your destiny, it is over today. In Jesus' name, no one is permitted to be buried in your family this year. No one is permitted to be buried in your family this year. No one is permitted to be bedridden in your family this year. Everyone that is bedridden is delivered today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Watch out for turning point testimonies this month. Watch out for turning point testimonies this month. The heavens has opened over your head. You are going to swim in supernatural abundance this year. In the name of Jesus. I decree that every week this year will be a week of testimonies for you. Beginning with this week, begin to walk into your testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. I believe this powerful teaching from God's servant Bishop David Oyedebo has inspired and blessed you indeed. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. Like and share the video also and leave your comment. And the Lord shall bless you abundantly. Remain ever blessed.